Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at <clears throat> how to use ropes and pulleys to get what's called mechanical advantage. Okay, so, so we'll do this fairly quickly here. Um, suppose I work in a uh, auto repair shop uh, and I want to lift an engine. Okay, this engine is maybe um, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's give it a, a weight of uh, maybe 500 pounds. Okay, and so this is a uh, and I'm either lifting it out of the car or I'm going to put it back in. But at any rate, I've got to do that. S we'll start with it on the ground and we're going to lift it up and we're going to put it inside the chassis, inside the engine compartment of a car. Okay, so here's my, here's my engine. Okay, and it's going to weigh 500 pounds. Okay, it's sitting on the floor right here. And what I want to do is I want to get it up uh, a few feet off the ground and be able to get it into a car. And so... You know, I can, oh, okay, this is just kind of a silly picture, but I could, you know, do it like this. I could bend over here and I could pick it up like that. Well, I couldn't because, first of all, I would really hurt my back. Okay, that's not a good thing to do to bend over and lift it up. It's not a good position. The other thing is I can't lift 500 pounds. Okay, so, so I got fig to figure out how to do this. And so um, we're going to look at ways that we can get advantages from using ropes and pulleys to be able to do this. And I'm going to do the first thing, the first thing I'm going to try is instead of trying to bend over and pick this thing up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach an eye hook to it and I'm going to put up on the ceiling, I'm going to put a pulley here. And I'm going to have a rope that comes up and goes over the pulley so this pulley is suspended on the roof and then I'm going to stand over here and I'm going to pull on this rope. Okay, so if I were to stand over here, uh, let's bring the rope on down and here's me. Okay, and I'm pulling on this rope now to try to lift this. Now I want you guys to remember that when I pull on this, I'm going to pull with a certain force. Okay, and that force will be in the direction of the rope. So it will be the tension force that I will put onto this rope. So I'm pulling it with some force here. And I'm using, I'm going to use an ideal pulley here. And remember that an ideal pulley is one that has no mass and it has no friction in it. And so it doesn't participate in any of this except to do one thing. And that is to change the direction of the tension. So if I pull on the rope at this end, then this rope is going to pull with a force on the lifting point, on that little eye, uh, with the same force that I'm pulling at this end. Okay, so as all this pulley's done is change the direction of the force, the direction of the tension force. Okay, so this is better because I'm standing up now. I don't have my back bent, and I don't have. I'm not in some kind of weird position, but I still got to pull on it with 500 pounds, right? In order for this block to lift off of the ground here. I've got to balance the, its weight, and it has a weight down here, Fg, equal to its 500 pounds times 4.45 newtons per pound. Okay, so I don't know, give me something like 920 pounds or something like 920 newtons or so. Okay, so in order for this to get off the ground, this force on the block, I'm going to call it the force on the block, has got to be equal to, uh, uh, let me just see what that is here. Hang on a second. I'm going to say it properly. This is 500 pounds times, uh, let's see, 500 pounds times 4.45 newtons per pound. So it's, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's much larger than what I said. This is equal to 22... 2,225 newtons. Okay. Now, I, if I let's just say that I have the ability to pull with 150 pounds. Okay, I can lift 150 pound block off the off the ground. Probably can do a little bit better by pulling here because of the position I'm in. But let's say I got 150 pound capacity. So I have 150 pounds times 4.45 newtons per pound, I can lift 667 newtons. Okay, that's with what I can pull with. So now I'm in a better position to pull, but I still can't lift this block. Okay, 
So what am I going to do? Well, I can imp actually improve this by doing this. I can take, I can add a pulley instead of having an eyelet down here. What I can do is I can put a little pulley here and I can wrap the string around and I can go and attach it to the ceiling up here. Okay, now if I do that, what I've done is I have increased my ability to lift this block and this is how it's done. We're going to take a free body diagram of this whole thing right here. We're going to call the pulley and the block our mass and we're going to take a do a free body diagram on that. And of course on the free body diagram we have a force of gravity going down. But we also have, if this is of course is our block, we have attached to this guy two tensions. Okay? I have two strings that are pulling on this instead of one. And if I pull with the same 150 pounds of force, then this tension is going to be equal to six, 667 newtons. And this one will be equal to 667 newtons. And this remains the same. This is 22, 25 newtons. So my net force on this block now is 2. The net force is equal to 2 times 667 newtons minus 200 and 225 newtons. Okay, so I have uh, I have uh, doubled the force that I can put on this block by pulling on this, but it still isn't enough, right? I mean, this is still going to be equal to, let's see, I have 14, um, 13, 1334 newtons minus 225 newtons, 2,225 newtons, and so this is going to be equal to, let's see, I have 1, I have 9, I have um, uh, 8, 891 newtons, and it's negative. So I still have a net force that's pulling down on the block. Of course, the whole time I'm getting some help from the normal force. Okay, I didn't actually put the normal force on my free body diagram. I should do that. This is the normal force, because this block is not accelerating. Force of gravity, two tensions, and a normal force. Okay, so this is the normal force. This is the negative, the normal force. The normal force has to be pushing up with 891 newtons in order for this block to remain stationary. I want to get the normal force down to zero, okay, in order to lift this block. So what I can do is instead of lifting with three strings, I could put another pulley up here, come up here, and I can come down here and I can fasten that to the block. And now if I do my free body diagram, I have three of these tensions. I still am pulling with 667 newtons. So now my force is going to be equal to 3 times 667. I have um, 3 times 667 newtons. I have 2,000 newtons here. Two thousand newtons, two thousand one newtons. So now I have a normal force helping me. There should be newtons right there. Of two hundred and twenty-four newtons. So I still have to have the floor pushing up with two hundred and twenty-four newtons in order for this block to remain stationary. Well, gosh, I'm pretty close now. If I could get one more factor, if I could have four strings that would be great so what I do is I put another pulley here and I attach this thing to the roof and now I have four tensions all of them are at 667 newtons I get four times 667 newtons which is going to give me Twenty-six, sixty-eight, 
2668 newtons and if I uh, subtract off uh, 2225 newtons I get that I'm actually now have a net force of 443 newtons in the plus j direction. That would be my net force. Okay. So this block now has a net force in the upward direction and it will accelerate up there. So I don't want it to accelerate, I just want to lift it off the floor. So what I want to do is I want to take this and say, okay, I want to find out when my net force is zero and I have four times an external force, which is the one that I put, the tension that I put on the rule, minus 225 newtons. And that clearly gives me that F external, the force I need to pull on the end of the rope, would be equal to 2225 newtons divided by 4. Okay, that's going to be equal to 2225 divided by 4 is 556. 556.56 newtons. All right. So now I can do that. I can pull with 667 newtons. I don't even have to pull that hard. And if I wanted to, I could add another pulley up here and bring it down and fasten it to the block. And I could continue to gain what's called mechanical advantage. Okay, this is what. A, a set of pulleys uh, and rope do for you is they allow you to be able to amplify the force that you can provide to, to, to the tension of a rope. You can amplify it and you can pick up very big weights. Now in reality I could do this, in theory I could do this with an infinite number of pulleys and I wouldn't I could pull with one pound and I could lift 500 pounds of weight. If I had 500 ropes that were here that would be uh, 250 pulleys down here and 250 pulleys up there. Uh, but in reality, each one of these pulleys is not an ideal pulley. It adds, um, it adds uh, friction and mass to, the, uh, to this. And so there's a limit. Eventually, the, the, uh, you're going to lose some of the forces through the resistive forces that are inside of the uh, bearings of the pulleys. But this is standard block and tackle uh, behavior. You can go down to hardware stores and buy you know, a set of pulleys four pulleys on a single axis and you get two sets of those and you can put one on the bottom one on the top and you can lift uh, a lot of weight. Um, there is a price that you pay for this and uh, you guys might think about it for a moment. You might, you might turn the video off right now and think about um, or pause the video and think about what the price is that you pay. There's no free lunch uh, and I'm going to uh, give you that opportunity right now if you want to think about it. But I'm going to tell you the answer. So. Um, the, uh, the price that you pay for that is that I have to pull, if I want to get, if I have one, two, three, four, uh, four pulleys, four, four ropes that are pulling on this thing, and I want to get this one foot off of the ground, then I have to pull four feet of rope, because I have to shorten each one of these lengths by one foot in order to be able to get 500, uh, 500 uh, pounds off the ground. So the price we pay is we use a smaller force, but we got to pull a longer distance to do that. And you guys have all seen these, I think, in you know maybe the Terminator movies where the Terminator, very heavy robot, you know, I think they always end up in a somehow in all these movies they end up in a steel mill. I don't know how that happens, but anyway, you know, uh, 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 Linda Hamilton, whatever her name is and Sarah Connor wants to lift him up and drop him into a bunch of um, molten metal to destroy him. She can't lift him but he gets on a chain and she starts pulling a chain and he slowly goes up and if you look it's all block and tackle. It's these chains are wrapped over pulleys and she has the strength to do it because she's got this great mechanical advantage. So at any rate this is the way that we're going to handle uh, tensions, ropes, and pulleys.